Yeah, so you, you've told this to me a little bit, Rich, and stuff, but I, but I don't think a lot of people, they just know richkern.com. And I think I told you when I came to the ABCA, the first thing that Bonnie Kenny said to me is like, well, why can't we get results up as fast as richkern.com? And I thought, why aren't we partnering with richkern.com if he's doing it faster than we are? So how did this thing all start and, and how did you get involved? Well, I got involved in, in volleyball back in about 1987. Uh, I was kind of a hack volleyball player at the, in the city rec level and got into USBBA at the time, too. And uh, I also heard about that Nebraska had a fairly good team at the time. And so I went to my first game about that time, and I just absolutely fell in love with the sport. I didn't realize that you actually ran plays, and there was so much skill and stuff like that. And uh, Nebraska was really good, and, and obviously they had a good coach and, and – uh, so I just wanted to get involved with that. And, and once I started going to the first Husker game, I never missed a, a home game for almost 20 years. So um, that's how I got involved in the sport. Uh, by getting, uh, in 1994, I started learning that there was an internet. Uh, it, was, it had just started not too far before that. And we'd got our office involved in it. And one day during a lunch hour, I was doing a search for volleyball on the internet. And I found there was only seven teams that were uh, available, any information available on the internet. And Nebraska wasn't one of them. So I uh, had been involved in getting our, our uh, office in, on the internet and uh, our website. And so I decided I could put together kind of a demo of what could be done for the University of Nebraska. And uh, I went and talked to the sports information director and, and said, and showed him the demo. And I don't know, know that they were too impressed at the time. They were really, everything was really crude at the time. Everything was done on a Linux system. Um, then, uh, but he did show it to Coach Pettit. And Pettit knew the value already of what the internet could do for them and, and promote, promoting their team. And so he encouraged the sports information department to give me all the information that I asked for and, and put it up on the internet. So that's how I got started on uh, the Husker Volleyball website. Um, so were you first, what were you concentrating on at that point? Were you kind of the SID type where you were focusing on information no. or were you always, what got you hooked on the results reporting and statistics side of things? Well, the, the first uh, two years, I just did it strictly for Husker Volleyball. And that was just putting basically their press releases up on the internet and the information from the, from the uh, press magazine, uh, whatever I could find on that. And then any of the old historical data, because a lot of times the press guides weren't available to the common people. Uh, so uh, I was able to get, get a copy of that and break all that stuff down and put it on the internet. It was all static at the time. So basically you had to type it all out uh, by scratch. Uh, in 1997, I believe it was, I put up my first uh, list of scores. And uh, that was just for the top 25 because you just couldn't hardly, get, even back then, you couldn't get scores very easily. So I, I started that just for the top 25 and did that for the first year then. Then in uh, 1998, I uh, decided to expand that to all Division One because people liked what, at least the, the top 25. And also about that time, uh, well, the first time I put it up, Coach Pettit saw it and he's, he really liked it. Liked it, gave me a lot of positive feedback. And I also got a message from uh, Russ Rose saying that he liked it. And I, I uh, then started continuing from that because that gave me a lot of encouragement when, the, when a couple of the two premier coaches say they like what I'm doing and think that I could make a difference. So um, I, it was all static again at the time. I had to develop all the pages at home, uh, build them as a web page, and then upload everything uh, uh, on a night, well, not on a night, uh, once a week. So that got me up to about 1999. And then by then, the University of Nebraska had all their own website going. And so I started out on richkern.com in 1999. So it was a kind of a development period, but uh, it's been fun. Yeah. And so where, I mean, what, when did it strike you that this could actually be a business, if you will? And uh... it, it didn't, didn't strike me that it could actually be a business uh, for quite some time. And I, I never in, intended it for it to be at all. It was just uh, once I had left the Husker volleyball program and started out on my own, I wanted to experiment with a dynamic website so that you enter the information into databases and then the pages are created dynamically with, based on the inputs that the, the visitor 
input it so that they could get what they wanted. And so that was just a toy for me. That's why I named it richkern.com because you know I didn't know what it was going to really be. In fact, it has richkern.com slash bb. That way I could do other things besides just volleyball. Um, and then, uh, so uh, I, I really, it started getting more expensive for me. And some of the coaches had encouraged me to do it as a business to uh, keep it, make sure I kept it going and gave me some incentive to go. And so uh, I think it's about 1993 that I actually decided, well, I'll start charging for it. Uh, Prep Volleyball had started charging for their website. And, and I got a lot of uh, negative feedback from people. I said, going for the, all the, the money, you know, and, and it wasn't my way my intention at all. I just had to start covering my expenses because they're getting about 5,000 a year or something like that. So that was, to, like I say, I've never really intended it to be a business and I still don't run it as a business. Uh, if somebody wants something from me, I'll try to do it and I've never charged anything uh, for anything special if they've asked. So uh, it's, it's just a w way of trying to do what I can for the sport. And, and I just want to do what I can. It's just been good for me and uh, I want to be good for it if I can. And how much of it do you do and, and your team um, of, of volunteers and people who are with you, how much of it are you doing and how much of it is being done by, by SIDs or maybe at some levels even by coaches? I had encouraged SIDs and coaches to help initially, but actually uh, once we, we got to live scores on there, then uh, it's just as fast for me to be able to do it from, from our end of it. As soon as the scores of uh, the matches are done, I just I have all kinds of, of routines uh, so that I can just copy and paste and hit the, the submit button and the scores are in. So usually on uh, if they have live scores going, then I have the scores go up within a, a minute in most cases. Some of them when they're really busy at a night, then I can't keep up with everything. But then again, I also have two volunteers that are just have been extraordinary. One of them is from North Carolina and the other is from here in Lincoln. And they just do a great job of, of like I'll be doing division one, one will be doing division two, and then uh, division three, and, and we'll pick up NAIA uh, as we can go along then too. And so we, we spend a lot of time in the evenings. We're spending a lot of time in the evenings, not so much right now. But uh, on, uh, and then on Fridays and Saturdays and a good part of Sundays, we're busy on most of the day keeping scores active. And then when did you decide to do uh, the Rich Kern rankings and stuff and actually get into that part of it? Um, there was just some, some other people that wanted to get involved in it. Really, it's nobody, uh, not so many people watch richkern.com uh, ranking system, that part of it. But we do it more because it helps us get involved in the sport. You have to study the teams, all the teams, uh, to know how they compare to others, not just the top 25 and everything uh, that, that you would normally follow, or, or a lot of people would just follow their own team. So there's a, quite a few people that just wanted to get involved in it that way. And so we started doing that. And then I started to have a, another ranking system um, several early on, and uh, it was a computerized system. I wasn't doing it. There was a, a kid from Michigan State that was doing it, Miguel Balacora. And we did that for several years, and then uh, he wasn't able to keep going on it as, as consistently as I needed, because by then it had been, been an integral part of my website with the rankings uh, along with the team, so that you can see, you know, if you beat one team, what that really meant compared to beating other teams. And so uh, then another guy who you know now, uh, Pablo, right. uh, has gotten involved with me, and He's done just an exceptional job, and we've had a real good partnership for a long time. And so once we started doing it, then I integrated the Pablo rankings into my scoring system, and it's, it's worked very well. So is the Rich Kern K KPI and Pablo, are they, is it a variation? They're, they're t the RKPI, Rich Kern uh, Percentage Index, is totally different from Pablo rankings. Okay. Pablo rankings is a... A computerized ranking system, but the RKPI is my simulation of what the NCAA's RPI is. Okay. And uh, for several years, I was able to get it fairly close, but not quite. It started getting off a little bit for uh, as it gradually worked on. And as I studied more what was going on, I realized that it had to do with how many teams were in it rather than a fixed percentage of different things. I don't go into what the 
what the secret ingredients are on it. Uh, everybody knows mostly what the, the three main things are as a record, your opponent's record and, and your opponent's opponent's record. But there's some secret things we learned and I don't discuss what those are because the NCAA has chosen not to uh, let that known what that is. But uh, so uh, the, the RKPI now is very close to what the NCAA is for the RPI. Okay. And so the only reason I do that, I'm not a fan of the, of the NCAA RPI, but since that is what they use significantly in their choices for the teams, then it's, it's valuable to the coaches and the fans to know what, the, what it is when you're going into the season and what, when you're getting into the point of the, uh, of the selection. And why are you not a fan of the RPI? It's not nearly as good as the Pablo ranking. Uh, the RPI is, it's, it doesn't put nearly enough information into it. It's just a win-loss record. And winning 3-0 or 3-2, uh, is there's a big difference to that. Also, when the teams are really very closely together, but uh, one team wins finally 3-2, but the last one's 16-14 or something like that, and the other sets have been close, whereas you would just see that one team won is, is all you get out of it with the RPI. So there's so much information that could be gleaned that Pablo does that the RPI, RPI does not. And, and another thing, early on in the season, the RPI, RPI is really no good at all. And... Uh, it's not until about halfway through the first comp or the first half of the conference season that it starts to kind of simulate what you're going to be looking towards at the end of the season. Whereas the Pablo by the third or fourth uh, weekend is very good already. Part of the reason is that he uses he starts by using the last season some of the records of the last season and, and information, and then he feeds that in and then gradually works that out of it so that by the third or fourth fifth season weekend then it's all just uh, this season. But it really does a good job early in the season because it does look at what your past record has been. Rich, when you think about how long you've been involved and the extent to which you've been involved and that kind of thing, what impact have you had on the sport of volleyball? Well, I hope a positive one. <laughs> um, I hope I've had a positive impact at least. Um, it's... I, I, ne I never, like I said at the very beginning, I never thought of this as, as going into it as a business or, or what it was going to become. It was just something for me to play with. And then it was something for me to, that I could kind of help other people find scores because they, they just couldn't find that. Another thing I wanted to work into my website early was uh, recruits because uh, it was so f hard to find information about recruiting. And I started my other website, which was Recruiting Registry, and that was to get people, the kids involved early on. They would uh, uh, have an opportunity to put their bio in, on my recruiting registry website, and it was totally free. And then the coaches could review that, and then also then I'd be able to find out when they were recruiting. And so that was a, one reason I want, another reason I got into richplan.com was to for the recruiting purposes. And now it's I'm one of the main people they turn the recruiting information into. Uh, it's it's been fun from that respect, but so it's it's kind of not a one shop stop for going and find who's recruited, but it's it's one of the primary ones. And then as far as the scores, a lot of people come to my site because the scores are up early, and then also because I was able to tie them to the rankings, they know more about what the scores really mean compared to beating one team and beating another team. So uh, I think it's had its pretty good positive impact around. Another, another thing that, uh, you know, first I wanted it to be primarily for the fans because I was a fan at the time and still am. Um, and also I wanted it to be for the coaches, but it, it, I found that it's been a lot for the parents and the uh, prep athletes that want to get involved in, in college volleyball. Uh, I get have an awful lot of clients that are parents that use that information, the recruiting information, particularly about where they, they've seen a, a kid that they've been watching through the years and what school they've gone to, and they can compare their own, if they're not biased too much, um, they can compare their own child to where they've seen their other co uh, kids go to school. And it's, it's really helped that them a lot on the recruiting. And thing. So I, I've had just tons of, of good reports from, from parents, from coaches, from fans that like what I've continued doing. So 
Opa, entendeu? Então, so when you look into the future, uh, do you, do you spend time speculating about what's what's next for you and what's next for richkern.com? Oh, I've thought about the future a lot. Um, the I, I in some ways almost every year at the end of the season I'm tired of it. I'm just burned out. I'm sure the coaches are too. You just you you've been doing it. You don't get any time off from August and for then probably more than that, but from beginning of August to the middle of December, I have no time. I can hardly leave. I can't, I can't go to away games, uh, do the things that I'd like to do. I, I can't travel at all. The only thing I do do is go to a Husker volleyball home games. And uh, it's, it's frustrating from that point. The other thing that's really frustrating is hackers and cyber crime. It's, that is so frustrating. I've been attacked by it three times. And it's not that they're going after information. They're, they're after money. They, uh, you get the, the, span, or the ransomware. Uh, my, last year, my service was hacked and, and every website on their, their service, which is thousands, were, were hacked and, and shut them all down. They couldn't recover. They finally had to force me over to another service. And that was difficult too. It's just that off-season stuff that's the, gar the garbage stuff that I don't like. Once I get into the season, I think, this is good stuff. I like this. I, I like helping people. I like to, to do this. It gives me a purpose, and it's fun to do. And it, it gives me, you know, it's just a lot of fun things to do. And the other thing is it, it pays for my, my expenses. Uh, my, anything associated with volleyball, I get to write off on my taxes. Um, and then... Uh, The other thing is once the season is over and after the end of December and into January, then at that point, then I, I've done all my end of season uh, up, updates and reports on the website and I'm pretty well done until August again. There's always daily stuff. That gets, but then I can, we, my wife and I can do some travel and uh, we enjoy a lot of international travel. Normally <laughs> this year we'll be out again. It was all, we had to cancel it last year. And uh, we'll have to cancel this year because usually I do it during the spring and we'll have, hopefully have spring volleyball. So, so that's, um, like I say, every year I think this is going to be my last, but once I get into it again, I enjoy doing it. What, what, what do you wish I would have asked you or what questions did you, have you uh, thought about that or comments do you want people to know about you or um, about one, what you do? One One fun thing that you didn't ask was that uh, how I got married. I enjoy talking about this because uh, my wife or my girlfriend at the time, uh, we met on the internet and she was from Texas and she'd come up. We were going to go to uh, the San Diego Final Four in uh, the year 2000 and, excuse me, 2001. Uh, and uh, she'd come up on a freight or come up in the week and, and I proposed on her birthday, which is on a Saturday. And then we were going to be leaving on Wednesday. And on Tuesday, I, before we left, I said, you know, we're not doing anything on Friday because they just play on Thursday and Saturday. Why don't we just fly out to Vegas and get married? And so we did. <laughs> so we got on the internet on Tuesday night, looked to see what it took and it didn't take anything at all. We went to the game Thursday night, uh, Friday morning, we flew over to Vegas. Uh, we met Joe, the cab driver, who was our wedding planner. He did everything for us. He shut off his meter in between getting the, uh, the, the wedding license and, and getting our, doing our marriage. And we had a very nice ceremony. We were back to, in San Diego by uh, noon. And, and then, then we had a uh, uh, party with our best friends there on Saturday for the volleyball team. So the Huskers were playing in San Diego? You were going back no, to San Diego? Okay. No, they weren't. We, we just uh, decided we were going to go to all of the volleyball uh, final fours because since oh, I couldn't okay. do any volleyball okay. during this game. All right. All right. So, so it was the championship was in San Diego, not San Antonio. San, San Diego. Oh, you may have said that. I yeah. Said San, yeah, San Diego. And yeah, yeah so we've been, we've been going to just about all the, the uh, final fours since then. Sure, just, sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's great. Well, and so she puts up with, uh, with this obsession <laughs> of yours? When she... When we first got married, she thought the uh, number of players on a team was uh, however many players you had. <laughs> you know, it's just that's what that's what it was in high school. You split them up and and you put everybody on one, half of them on one side, half on the other. Since then, she's gotten pretty knowledgeable and uh, she knows the players, she knows the plays, and 
and she's very tolerant of it. So, yes. So what do you think about spring? Well, we're going to be able to try it. It's not necessarily an ideal situation, but I, for this particular one, it's going to be kind of horrible because some teams are playing now. Uh, then they're not going to be playing anymore until they get into the, the final four, if and some of them will get to that point. And it's try, trying to do what you're talking about, doing an ABCA ranking. Um, so the, the ranking is going to be not good, but it's it's something that, can, that the fans want to see a little bit, coaches want to see. Yeah, there, there's no good way to do a, a ranking at this time, and there won't be a, a good way to do the ranking trying to mix in the player teams that are playing now with the teams that are playing in the spring. So hopefully we'll have a spring season. Um, but you, you just do the best you can. So, um, yeah, um, we, for our richburn.com poll, a guy named Rob Pigler, who used to be a division one referee, um, does all that for me. Our, our voters, we have about 20 to 25 voters that uh, send in the results to him and he, uh, puts that, all that together and then sends it to me. But one thing he has done is he has a kind of a band on an outside band so that you have to kind of be in that band if, you, if, you're, right. if you're outside the first time. And it, we don't start that until about, oh, six, eight weeks into the season. But if you're outside that band, then you kind of have to justify to him why you're saying this team should be uh, ranked that low or this high. And then uh, if you don't, justify it and you keep voting out there and it's not a very good justification other than you think that they should be better than that then you vote out there won't count as much our, our voters are very very uh conscientious about it they say uh, one of the things we say is you can't you enter your own biases although i'm sure it does a little bit but uh we've been very satisfied with it and, and in fact our I'm sorry to say this kathy but our uh richkern.com poll has actually done better than ABCA for most of the years that we've been doing it. Just slightly. But just okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 When you compare, no, I'm, when you compare I'm, I'm not offended. It's, yeah. And, and one, one other thing that we've done on, on ours that I don't know that you do on yours is that with richkern.com with, and what Rob's does, is if somebody sends in a vote that doesn't rank Stanford at all, they just right. look them accurately, then he'll catch that and he'll let them know. Whereas yeah. I've seen some of yours where a very significantly good team is not in there. And it was obviously just an oversight. It had to be because mm -hmm. you can't have somebody like a standard or a Nebraska uh, not ranked um, when they're, when everybody else is putting two and three in. So. Good stuff. Well, you've certainly made an impact on the sport. And, uh, you know, I think when we're looking back on the sport of volleyball as to who provided the information to to put us on the map and to and to give us the legitimacy that we're a real sport uh, rich kern is going to be a name uh, that's going to be part of volleyball history so just thank you very much for all the time well, I, and for the interest and i certainly appreciate your comments kathy uh, the other th one other thing i should emphasize is that the partnership with the abca has been valuable to me uh, you have given, you've also provided me with a reputation too, because nobody would be associated with ABC that didn't sort of qualify to, to be that. And so that has been very good for me too. So I, 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 I'm glad we've been able to work together and I think it's been good for both of us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks much, Rich. Well, thank you so much, Kathy. I appreciate this. Bye-bye. Right.